Welcome to Stetson Law Live. Your host for today's program, Associate Director for Student Life, Jenna Kelly. And her guest, Stetson Law Ambassadors, Nick Mitchell. And Genesis Matute Smith. Our topic for today, Student Life at Stetson Law. And now here's your host, Jenna Kelly. Good afternoon and welcome to Stetson Law Live. Our topic today is Student Life at Stetson Law. My name is Jenna Kelly and I'm the Associate Director for Student Life and also your host or moderator for today's session. I'm joined by two very special guests, some rising 3L students here at the College of Law. I will let them introduce themselves in just a minute. Um, but before I do, I wanted to tell you just a little bit about myself and the Office of Student Life and some of the programs and services that we offer here at the College of Law. So again, my name is Jenna Kelly. Um, I am originally from Wisconsin, but I moved down to attend the University of South Florida where I did both my undergrad and graduate work. My master's degree is actually in college student affairs or higher education administration. So when I graduated there in 2009, I ended up working there in the Center for Student Involvement, so under the uh, student affairs umbrella, up until 2013 when I uh, joined the team here at Stetson College of Law. So part of what really drew me to the College of Law, even from an employee perspective, was the great, of, of course, the um, I know that Stetson has a great reputation academically, but beyond that, there's a lot of offerings outside of the classroom in a co-curricular manner as well. Um, and some of those, actually a lot of those, are housed in the Office of Student Life. So I'm going to give you a really quick overview of some of those programs and services. And we will, of course, touch on them in a lot more detail um, coming up in a bit. Um, but so, for example, some of the things that we do are um, we oversee the Stetson Ambassador Program, the Student Bar Association, the Student Leadership Development Committee, um, all of our campus wellness programming, so our fitness, intramurals, um, mental health initiatives, um, and additionally, we provide a lot of the programming and services um, on a large scale to the campus. So for example, we have Family and Friends Day this fall, um, orientation obviously coming up very quickly. We're looking forward to seeing all of you there. Um, so again, that's just a really quick snapshot. We will get into much more detail about all of those things and other things throughout our time here together. Um, but I am going to let our students introduce themselves now. And um, if you guys could just tell us maybe a little bit about yourselves, where you're from, maybe where you did undergrad, what drew you to Stetson College of Law, and then um, maybe a quick overview of some of the activities and things that you're involved in here on campus. So. We'll do ladies first. Um, Genesis, let's start with you. Hi, everyone. My name is Genesis Smith. I uh, attended the University of South Florida, got my degree in international studies, and uh, absolutely love the Tampa Bay area. I'm from here, and I wanted to stay close to home. So Stetson was my first choice, and I absolutely love it here. Great. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick Mitchell. I'm from Gainesville, Florida. Uh, I went to the University of Florida, so that was convenient. Um, but uh, I got my undergraduate degree in finance and was working for a little while before realizing that I just was missing something and uh, tried to look at law schools and I applied all over and uh, I made one visit to Stetson and was sold. It was just, the campus was gorgeous. Everybody there was so friendly. I felt like I already had friends there just the first time that I walked on campus. So that was really what did it for me. Great, thank you both. And I want to remind all of you viewing, um, while I certainly have some questions here for Genesis and Nick, um, please type in any questions that you have along the way and we will absolutely do our best to get those answered as well. Um, so I just wanna start by, if you guys could give a quick overview of some of the activities that you're involved in here on campus. Um, just a quick overview and then maybe we'll highlight some of those in a little bit more detail and we'll start with you this time. Okay, um, so I've been very active in Stetson's Christian Legal Society. I served as secretary there uh, this past year and have since allowed that position to be filled by another person um, because as part, as part of being an ambassador, um, I stepped up into a leadership role there where I felt like I could probably be 
a little bit better utilized as far as my skills. Uh, so I am one of the deputy chief ambassadors and I help run the ambassador program. Um, I also am very active in all di different things on campus. I, you know, I'm very much so um, part of the gym. I like to I work in the gym. Um, I do intramurals and uh, I'm also part of the JD MBA program. So if anybody has any questions about that, that would be something that I could answer for you. Great. And how about you, Genesis? What sorts of things are you involved in on campus? I am a member of the Student Leadership Development Committee. I'm also a Stetson Ambassador with Nick, and uh, I work in the Elder Law Center, so I'm highly involved there. I'm also the Vice President of the um, Elder Law Society. Great. Thank you both. So one common theme that you both mentioned was the fact that you are both ambassadors. And I know that our incoming students get a chance to engage and interact with our ambassadors a lot, especially um, throughout their first year. So could Nick, maybe you tell us a little bit about the ambassador program generally and, and how you all interact with the new and incoming students? Sure. Um, so the ambassador program is a really great program when you first come on to Stetson Law Campus, whether it's orientation or just admitted students day, you'll notice that there's a bunch of ambassadors typically wearing green polos so that we stand out from the crowd, uh, helping you do whatever it is that you're trying to do on that particular day, whether it be um, head to a different classroom, learn a little bit of information about the campus. Um, the ambassador program there is what I would consider a leadership program. And uh, so, the various activities that occur on campus, the ambassadors tend to help put these on and uh, we try to be there as far as guiding students in every essential direction. Great. And I know a lot of you as step one of orientation had to or will have to uh, fill out a mentorship pairing form um, to match you up with an ambassador who will serve as your mentor. Um, Genesis or Nick, do either one of you want to talk a little bit about that process? Sure. Um, we are, I like to think that ambassadors are the face of Stetson in the sense that we're here from the very step, a very first step of the way when we give tours. Um, we're here for orientation, some of the first interactions some students have with the, with the university. Um, we are also here all the way up until graduation. We work the graduation event. So we are the face of Stetson from the very beginning to the very end. And uh, Nick hit it right on the head. We're here to help students guide them from every step of the process, the beginning to the end. And part of that is the pairing, as you mentioned, with the mentorship program that we have through the ambassadors. Um, I absolutely love the mentorship program. I loved being a mentee, and I also love being a mentor now that I am an ambassador. It's a really fulfilling role to work with incoming students, helping putting their ease at, their fears at ease, and uh, allowing them an opportunity to ask questions and um, be able to interact with students instead of feeling the pressure of going straight to staff or faculty. They can talk with someone who knows uh, what's going on with the school, the uh, what to expect your first day of class, and it's just a really fun, rewarding opportunity to work with students. Great. Did either one of you um, have a specific example of maybe when your mentor really helped you through a tough time or perhaps an event or activity that you attended with your mentor that really helped you get acclimated to the College of Law? Um, I can take that for you. Um, one of the things that I really kind of stood out for me as far as the mentorship program is when I first came to Stetson, I really didn't have an understand or not an understanding. I really didn't have a big group of friends. Uh, most of my friends had gone on, they had begun working in the financial field, and so when I moved here everything was very new to me. Um, the thing that I really liked, my, and my mentor initially um, invited us to a Rays baseball game, and I had never been to a Rays baseball game even though I've lived in Florida, and for me that was really cool because not only did I get to go with the other, his other mentees, but there were also other ambassadors who brought their mentees. So I really met a lot of people and was really able to bond with some new people to actually create some, what I will consider, lifelong friendships. Great. Um, another thing that both of you touched on was your involvement within student organizations. So I just wanted to highlight, we have a lot of student organizations here at the College of Law. We actually have over 45. 
Um, so I was hoping that you guys could speak a little bit more to your involvement within your respective organizations. Uh, Genesis, I know that you're involved with elder law, right? Yes. Um, I apologize. Can you repeat the question? Sure. I just <laughs> talk a little bit about your involvement with elder law. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, elder law has been really rewarding as well. Um, we do volunteer programs where we volunteer with the elderly at the Boca Ciega Center down the street from the school. We did a shredding event with the Gulfport Senior Center where we helped elders uh, shred some of their old tax documents and things, making it harder for their identities to be stolen. Uh, we've done all kinds of interesting programs. Working with the Elder Law Society has also given me a foot in with the Elder Law Center where I also work part time for the school. And I've gotten to work with Professor Morgan at the Special Needs Trust Conference and network with attorneys all around the country. Um, every single interaction that I have with the organizations and clubs that I'm involved in has opened up doors for me and allowed me to meet new people and try new things. And it's been very rewarding and challenging and just awesome all around. Great. And Nick, I know you have some involvement in student organizations as well. What has your experience been like? Um, so uh, the <laughs> one of the big organizations that I was a part of was Christian Legal Society. Um, Coming from Gainesville, I was a part of a church, and that was very important to me. So when I joined the Christian Legal Society, um, at first it was just a way to join together with other students and just join together in fellowship. Um, what I didn't realize was that Christian Legal Society was actually a uh, nationwide organization uh, headquartered out of Texas. And so when I actually became part of the leadership for the Christian Legal Society, uh, we actually got to meet with the head of the entire Christian Legal Society who opened us up to different attorneys who follow that same uh, the, the same belief as you uh, as a way to kind of network. Uh, they have an annual conference that we were invited to and they were able to help us out with that. So there's been that aspect as far as reaching out and kind of networking ourselves. Uh, we've also worked for Alpha House, which is an organization that helps provide clothing and food for single mothers. Uh, we try to get together at least every other week, if not more, and just get together and just try to talk about each other's day and see how things are going, see how everybody's doing, try to make sure that we're just there for everybody and just let them know that if, if they need any help, you know, we're here for them. So that was the big one to me. Great, thank you both. Um, so as you can see, those are two examples of organizations that we have here on campus. But as I mentioned, we have over 45, so surely there will be something of interest to each of you. Um, I did wanna highlight that within the first couple weeks of school, we do um, hold a student organization fair. Uh, around noon, which is when you should be on break from class in the Great Hall. So that's an opportunity for all of our student organizations to set up a table with information and really engage with you all and tell them, uh, tell you all a little bit more about themselves. So if you are interested in joining a student organization and would like some more information or are not sure exactly which ones you want to get involved with, the student organization fair within the first couple weeks of school will be your perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, so it looks like we have a couple questions coming in, and the first one here, and this is a this is a good question. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering this, but it's for Nick and Genesis. Whoever wants to take it, um, what is the first year like, and what did you find to be the most difficult? I'll go ahead and answer. Um, the first year for me was rewarding. It was challenging. It was nothing what I expected and also really awesome. So it's hard to describe, but you'll find your footing and you'll really enjoy everything you're learning. You'll find everything that you do rewarding and you're gonna wake up feeling excited every morning and go to bed feeling fulfilled. And I think that's really important and that's what I found here at Stetson. Great, how about for you, Nick? What did you really like about your first year? And then on the flip side, what was a challenge maybe that you weren't anticipating? Uh, well, I mean, I definitely understood that there was going to be a lot of work associated with coming to law school. It's law school, of course. Um, the thing that I really like, Stetson puts us into three different sections in, for your first year. And in your section, you're essentially taking all of your classes with the same people. You see the same people all five days of the week, and they're doing the same work that you're doing. So essentially, you kind of create a bond with these people who are in your section because you guys are all in the trenches going to work together. And so that to me was very cool. The other thing that I really liked is 
that the professors here had a very open door policy and I wasn't expecting that. Um, my mom's an attorney and she's kind of told me some horror stories from over the years. So I was really, really nervous about coming to law school thinking that there just wasn't going to be any help provided to me, that I was going to have to figure everything out on my own. When in reality that was exactly the opposite. It was everybody here was trying to help you and go out of their way to do so. Um, probably the most difficult thing I found was trying to figure out things to do outside of school. Uh, because Stetson is such a great uh, community, I've found that I really only know Stetson, not a ton outside in the St. Pete community. I've since branched out, but initially it felt like I was just doing everything on campus, which wasn't a bad thing either. Well, Nick, I think that you make a really good point. I've heard that to be somewhat of a common theme. Obviously, you're spending so much time on campus, and especially when you're in a, sec a class with your same section every week, it's really easy, and we want you to get fully immersed and engaged in the Stetson community. But I do think it's important, you know, if you have friends outside of Stetson or family in the area or whatever the case may be, um, to partake in a few activities that are maybe non-law school related, I think that definitely helps um, kind of create create a sense of balance there. So Nick, I'm glad that you touched upon that point. Uh, we have another question coming in about orientation. I'm sure that's at the forefront of everyone's mind. We're going to see you here in you know, just over a month. Um, so the general question is really what, what is orientation like? I know both of you went through orientation as incoming 1L, so can you walk us through that experience and you know, what was it like for you? So um, orientation is it's a long day, you get a lot of information, but you also are learning a lot of different things. There was a mock class, which to me was really cool to see because I was scared to death. I didn't know what in the world to think, you know, coming into this. So that mock class allowed me to see, you know, what do these professors expect? And, you know, what do they, what do they want me to do? What do I need to do so that I'm successful? Because I'm here to try hard, but I need to know what to do in order to to be showing the professors that I'm trying hard. So for me, that was great. Um, we also did a lot of different activities with IT. We synced up our computers. We became part of the Stetch and Internet and were able to uh, just figure out how to work everything that we needed to do so that whenever it did come time for classes to start, that we were fully prepared and that we weren't searching around the campus trying to find out what in the world's going on. Great. How about for you, Genesis? What was your orientation experience like? Um, I would echo what Nick said in the sense that I loved the mock class. It was really, really helpful to understand what was going to happen the first day um, of actual classes. And it was really informative and really gave me a perspective on, like what Nick said, what to expect the first day, what the professors would be talking about, how that whole Socratic method worked in the legal sense, um, it, that was really, really helpful. I also liked that they took the time to help us get acclimated to everything, not just feeding us to the wolves the first day. We got a full tour. We got all the information we would ever need. I keep that binder on my bookshelf right next to my computer. When I have a question about the school, I know that there's something in there that I can find to point me in the right direction. So everything that, it, like Nick said, it's a lot of information, but you don't have to read it all the first day, and it will be very, very helpful going forward throughout the years. Great. And I want to go back to the mock class for a minute. I know that for a lot of students, that's one of the things that they're most nervous about. And I understand the first time I sat through the mock class, I was just an administrator, so I wasn't even in the mock class. And I was even slightly, slightly nervous about it. I don't know why. But so <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate that a lot of students are. Um, but really, I do think the majority of students come out of the mock class not feeling nervous, but really feeling prepared and feeling like they've had some of their expectations clarified. Um, so hopefully that will ease your nerves a little bit if that is a portion that you're nervous about. Um, we've gotten a very important question here. Um, what is your favorite beach in the area? And I say that's an important question because I'm sure we have some people coming, um, joining us from out of state. So if you wouldn't mind typing in where you're from, that would be interesting for us to see where you guys are coming from. But if you're coming from somewhere cold, like when I was coming from Wisconsin, knowing where the good beaches were was very important. So do either of you have a favorite beach that you like to go to? Um, so right down the road from us, five minute drive, St. Pete Beach. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I think 
what I was told is that it's been ranked like a top five beach in one in the world. Um, it's really just it's a great beach. The water's perfectly clear. It's sandy. You can you can walk out in the water as deep as you want. Still see still see your toes at the bottom. So um, it's it's a fun place. It's a place a lot of people like to go. Uh, the other place that we have that's just a little bit further, about 15 minutes down the road, is a place called Fort DeSoto. And it's an old fort, but it's turned into a real popular beach if anybody has any pets. Um, they have a dog beach there, so I know that my roommate and I like to take the dog to the dog beach and let the dog run around and play in the waves. Um, it's also a really good place for fishing. I, I'm a fisherman, so if anybody likes fishing, that's a great place to go as well. Genesis? Yeah, Fort DeSoto is beautiful. I love Sunset Beach down by Caddy's. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome, really fun beach. Um, and I'm partial to North Reddington just because I grew up on that beach. Like I said, I'm from the Tampa Bay area. So I've been going to North Reddington and the Madeira Beach area for a long, long time. And it's um, always been a really fun, nice, quiet beach when you're looking for just a nice place to sit, maybe read a little while outside, get outside of the fluorescent lights <laughs> and get under some real sunlight. It, it's a nice, relaxing beach to be at. Great, thank you both. Uh, we have another question coming in about, is there anything that you all would recommend that they do between now and the beginning of the school year in order to help kind of prepare themselves? Obviously orienta orientation and some of the modules that they're working through for orientation will be helpful, but is there anything additionally that you all think would be helpful in them preparing for their time here? I actually, I love that question. In fact, I've, I've received that question quite a few times on tours that I've given recently. Uh, the biggest thing that I can say to prepare yourself for law school is to spend time with your family and friends. You know, you're going to have so much time here in law school where you're going to be taking care of all your work and you're going to learn how to do everything and you're going to figure out what you need to be doing. A lot of people say, oh, you need to read this book that's 101 ways to prepare for law school or something like that. I, I didn't do any of that. Uh, I was very successful, or I consider myself to be very <laughs> successful. I'm not, not trying to brag there, but uh, there is, you know, definitely, um, you know, just spend time with your family. That's the biggest thing I can say. Let them know because you're going to be busy, and when it comes down to it, just let them know that, you know, you love them, but you got more important things you got to be doing right now which will be while you're in school. I completely echo everything that Nick is saying. Absolutely, enjoy your summer, enjoy the time with your family, get acclimated to the area. If you move down a little bit earlier, go check out the art scene, check out the beaches, enjoy the restaurants. St. Pete has awesome restaurants, great hangouts. Um, there's always something interesting to do, first Friday, third Saturday, all that great stuff. Um, just enjoy your summer and relax and get prepared, but um, in the sense of getting organized. Just get yourself organized and just get ready in, in, um, by spending time with your family, really, so that you have that chance to do it before you get in the full swing of things. Great, so speaking of becoming acclimated to the area, we have a question here um, about students who might already be in the area and whether or not there are any opportunities um, for them to engage in our community, whether through events or maybe some local Stetson hangouts um, before their time here. Um, as far as events go, you know, we do have the Monday of orientation. We do have a, um, a reception that not only you, but your family and friends are invited to as well. Uh, so that's a really good time um, to meet a bunch of fellow students, faculty, staff, administrators. So I would highly recommend that you come to that reception the uh, Monday of the week of orientation. Um, but as far as Stetson hangouts, I know that a lot of our students hang out in the Gulfport area as well as St. Pete, um, but I will throw that to either Nick or Genesis or both of you um, to answer where some of the hangouts might be. After you. Um, I know everybody goes down to O'Maddy's right uh, here in Gulfport, really close by. It's a fun place to hang out. It's a beach bar. Um, there's also, I, I like to hang out at the beach personally, and downtown St. Pete is awesome. Like I said, there's a great restaurant scene down there and a great uh, craft brew scene. So one of my favorites is Cycle. So that's where I hang out most days <laughs> that I have time to hang out. So if you want to see Genesis, <laughs> there you go. Great. How about you, Nick? So, yeah, just to re-echo, the O'Maddy's is a restaurant just right down the road here. It's a very popular Stetson hangout. It's, it's actually kind of hard to go there and not see a Stetson student, somebody that you know. Um, so there's a couple of different restaurants in that area, and that's a good hangout. 
uh, as well as the downtown scene, like what she was saying. Downtown St. Pete has a lot to offer. Uh, I, like to cons I like to say that I'm a little bit of a foodie and that I like to try different restaurants. And the downtown area definitely has a lot of different restaurants and different places that you can go so that uh, you can try a bunch of different types of cuisine and you know just kind of get out and walk around. It's really beautiful. Great, thank you both. And you heard me mention the welcome reception. So I just wanted to let you all know that there will be more information posted about the welcome reception on Stetson Connect. So make sure to look out for that as well. Um, Nick, you had mentioned you um, your experience with the JD MBA program. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question here um, wanting you to elaborate a little bit more on your experience with that program. Sure. Um, so initially when I came to Stetson, I, had, I didn't really consider the JD MBA program. I thought to myself, how in the world am I going to get a, a law degree and my MBA at the same time? Like, how is there time for that? Everybody already says that there's not time to do the law degree or they, they wish they didn't have to study as much as that they did. Um, what I didn't realize, I went to an informational session and it's actually way more manageable than you would expect. Um, they have the MBA professors actually come over to Stetson campus. They teach classes, generally they're one to two nights a week, depending on what they are. And then during the summer, they have a condensed semester that are three nights a week uh, for just a shorter period of time. They teach a variety of different classes, uh, all within the MBA program. And the way they, it kind of works out is you subtract some of your required law credits and replace those with some of your MBA credits and then double count some of the classes that you take. So being part of the MBA program, it does require you to take a couple of more business-related law classes. Um, some of those classes are actually bar-tested classes, so it actually works out pretty well. Um, and then they, the other classes that you have for your electives are essentially anything. So you do a little bit, typically a class or two a semester of the MBA along with your JD classes and you know really it's very manageable. Great so speaking of classes can you guys talk a little bit about the process of signing up or bidding for classes I know that it's a little bit different your your first year but maybe walk us through what the first year looks like um, and then through the second year in terms of signing up or bidding for classes. Sure. Uh, bidding for classes has actually been really streamlined I think with the um, new banner web that we're using. And um, I personally like the way that we do bidding for classes. You get an open opportunity to choose a few classes that you like. And then um, once the registrar closes that period, everyone gets assigned normally the classes that you bid for. And then you, um, you know, move a few things around here and there. But every semester that I bid for classes, all my schedule, all my classes have worked out with my schedule. I've been able to do everything that I want to do, work at the school. I've been able to fit in internships. Time, plenty of time for studying. Um, so it's really, as long as you get on it early and you're organized about it, you'll definitely get all the classes you want and the schedule you want. And it's, uh, like I said, it's been really streamlined with the new system we're using now. Great, and Nick, have you been as fortunate about getting all the classes that you've needed and wanted? <laughs> uh, I have, actually. Um, I, I've definitely, like every semester that I've bid for classes, I've gotten exactly everything that I wanted. Um, I did want to say, like, your first year that you're here, your classes are already picked out for you. The only class that you get to pick out is your spring semester, uh, your research and writing class. Uh, you can kind of try and tailor that if there's a topic that kind of interests you um, more so than another. But your classes, first year, are all picked out, and so you don't have to worry about that when you first come here. It's not even until your second year, and by then you have a really good grasp of what's going on such that you know like what to bid for and how to go about doing that such that you will land the class that you want. Great, thank you. So we've talked a little bit about classes, about some of the activities you all are involved in outside of class. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe your work-life balance and, and how you're able to, um, you know, put your academics first as well as trying to find that balance outside of school as well and how that's worked out for you? Um, yeah, work in, uh, your Work life and school life is, it's challenging to balance it at first, um, but you, like I said before, you'll find your footing. Um, outside of school, I'm also a wife, so that's really fun to make sure he doesn't eat out of a box every <laughs> night of the week. But we manage just fine, and for the most part, um, I'm an early riser, so an early schedule works for me. 
I treat school like a job. I get up early, I tackle the day. Sometimes you put in a few hours of overtime. Sometimes you work on the weekends. But for the most part, I get to spend my evenings with my husband. Um, and I tailor my school schedule so that I can fit in a few hours working with the Elder Law Center and making connections here on campus as well as off campus. And then I also have been able to leave some time to intern and get some actual work experience outside of the classroom. So it's definitely doable. It takes a little bit of, uh, of uh, gumption, but you get it done. You just get it done. And uh, you'll find it gets a lot easier as time progresses. You'll find that there are so many little holes that you can fill with productive things to do and you'll find yourself just keeping busy all day long. So it's definitely doable. Um. The work life, it's definitely, it's very manageable. And the thing that you have to realize too is that all the employers around here, they understand that school is first you. They understand that that's most important. It depends on what you want to do. Your first year, you're more than likely not going to be working at all. You're supposed to be focusing on your classes, trying to study, do the best you can. So usually you'll tend to start working either the summer, after your first year. You may do a little bit in your first year, uh, but typically not a lot. Uh, the nice thing about bidding for your classes, you can look at the classes and kind of pick what days they are so that you can try and clear out some of your schedule. It's uh, very common for most people to have Fridays off, but if you play it right, you could have a day off also in the middle of the week where you can allow yourself to work. And uh, the, I just, the one thing that I've always un, uh, liked about this is just that Stetson's such a big community. A lot of the attorneys that work in this area went to Stetson or know Stetson in some way, shape, or form. And so they realize what's required of you as a student and that really, even though you're working for them, that's your secondary priority, that your school is your primary thing that you're trying to focus on. And so they make it very manageable for you. Great. Thank you both. I want to encourage you all to keep your questions coming. Um, at this time, though, we're going to take a short break, and we have a video prepared for you. I know that you're going to enjoy it, and we will see you back in just a few minutes. My best experience at Stetson so far has been interacting with students and getting to know their passions for law. The best part of Stetson thus far for me has been my trial advocacy class. My professor taught me skills that will last the rest of my life. The, the thing I've, I've enjoyed most about my Stetson experience was the first year student opening statement competition. I mean, it was my first time being in the courtroom and advocating, and the best part for me was that I was able to do it in front of my, my parents who came down all the way from Buffalo. That opportunity opened countless number of doors after that. The thing that I've enjoyed the most about my experience at Stetson is the professors. They have clearly excelled in their expertise outside of academia, but they deliver their experiences into the classroom so personally. They are true servant scholars. My favorite experience has been traveling with the Stetson trial team and also training with the trial team. I feel like I have learned an enormous amount just by being a member of the Stetson trial team. One of my favorite experiences at Stetson has been becoming a Stetson ambassador and welcoming visitors to the campus. I've really enjoyed my pro bono experience here at Stetson. I got to work with the Salvation Army and do resume workshops for people who are re-entering the workforce. So far at Stetson, I've really enjoyed the classroom experience as well as the different advocacy competitions. I've really enjoyed being a member of Moot Court Board since I've been at Stetson. It's really fun to work on briefs with team members and then go compete in oral arguments. My favorite experience here at Stetson has been the opportunity to get involved with student organizations on campus, such as Phi Alpha Delta and the Environmental Law Society. One of my favorite things about Stetson has been the opportunity to be able to intern and clerk outside of my formal legal education. Stetson is all about a community and the collaboration. Faculty, staff, fellow students, and alumni all work together to help you to achieve success. I really enjoyed taking part in the appellant advocacy competition which allowed me to gain some real-life courtroom experience. My favorite experience at Stetson has been the moot court program. Practicing real-world advocacy skills, you can't really get that experience anywhere else. Stetson is the oldest law school in Florida and the campus is really beautiful. Welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed our short video. Uh, during the break, we did get 
several questions in related to some of the dorms on campus and student living. Um, so I wanted to encourage you, if you have specific questions about your move-in date, I would encourage you to email housing at law.stetson.edu and our assistant director for residential life will get you connected and answer any of your specific questions. But more generally, um, I know that Nick has lived on campus, both on campus and in uh, Stetson Housing located just off campus. So I'm gonna ask him to speak about that in just a minute. But before I do so, I just wanted to mention that uh, Stetson Law School is one of the only law schools that actually provides housing and 11% of our students live on campus. And in addition to that 11%, we actually have a lot of students that live right around the area in Stetson-owned housing. So certainly um, a high number of our students live right in this area. And that's not to say that all of them do. We certainly have some commuters. I know that Genesis lived in Tampa prior to moving a little bit closer. But I'll turn it to maybe Nick first. Um, can you talk about your experience about you know living on campus? And now I know you're right near campus <laughs> and what you've enjoyed about that. Um, yeah, so when I, when I first came to Stetson, uh, I really didn't know much about the area. I looked around a lot and uh, eventually decided to go with one of the dorm rooms. Uh, I spoke with Tracy Rich, who's the one who's the head of the housing department here on, in Stetson's campus, and she was able to show me a dorm, and I realized that that just looked like the best case scenario for me. Uh, the dorms, they tend to have some sort of a built-in desk, uh, lots of storage space. You can put all your books and different things like that. They have a bed, generally a full-size bed, I want to say, is what, what they provide. Um, I will say, you know, that bed's comfortable. I miss it. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was quite comfy. Um, the, you know, there's not a ton of living space. It, it's manageable. It's exactly what you need for your first semester, you know. Um, the, the best I've done in law school was when I was in a dorm, and I think it was just because I was confined to an area that just, I was always doing work, um, which was great. Um, the other thing is a very popular condominium right across the street is called Golfview, and I know that there's a ton of people that live there. A lot of my friends uh, live there. I actually started living there the spring semester of my first year, and I ended up living there for a year and a half. Uh, Golf View is a great place right across the street. Like I said, there's a, a nice walkway to get to campus, so you don't even have to drive to campus if you don't want to. Um, it's really well maintained. It's pretty. It's like Stetson almost because all of the bushes, shrubbery, grass, everything's always kept in pristine condition. Uh, they have nice pools, uh, a little overhang so you can sit out and grill if you want to. They have little charcoal grills built in. Uh, the other uh, thing that's really popular is the Stetson Houses, which again is run through Tracy Rich in the housing department. Uh, the Stetson Houses are houses that surround the school that have been bought by the school, and essentially you're renting from the school. Uh, they, they tend to be a little bit better as far as pricing goes in the area, and uh, they're very, what I noticed, because I just moved in just recently, is that they're very clean whenever I first moved in. And the great thing about it is if you have any maintenance problems one bit whatsoever, you call Stetson. And Stetson's the one who's coming out there. They're going to fix the things for you. They're the ones who take care of your lawn for you. And so everything having to do with the Stetson house is just very convenient. And you know that you're going to get good care while you're in there. Said the house was clean when you first moved in, so can I <laughs> assume that's no longer the case? Well, so, I mean, I've been in the house for just a couple of weeks. I haven't got it settled the way I would like it to be, but I tend to consider myself to be a fairly clean person. <laughs> Great. So we have a question, speaking of one of the houses, about whether or not you can bring your pets to live in the house. Um, did you have a dog or a pet with you that lived on campus in your house? So um, it's actually kind of exciting. Uh, my roommate is getting a dog tomorrow so we're real excited about that uh, we're going to adopt it's like a little german shepherd lab puppy uh, stetson is great about it they uh, you just put a deposit down for the dog and they're very friendly the whole campus is dog friendly which is another thing that's kind of cool that i like mm -hmm. you know uh, a lot of times you'll be on campus and you'll walk into a professor's office and they've got their dogs in there Professor Zeard always brings her poodles. Uh, I believe it's Professor Fitzgerald who always has his golden retrievers. Um, so very dog friendly situation. If you want to bring them, it's no problem. Great. 
Thank you. So staying in the realm of housing, we have a question here about a student who's debating between living in St. Pete or Gulfport. Um, it looks like they're familiar with both communities um, and maybe is slightly partial to St. Pete, but is wondering if they should live in Gulfport um, just so that they can be a little bit closer and in closer proximity to all of the things that happen here at the College of Law. Do either of you have an opinion about that? Genesis, I know you've lived a little bit further and have now moved in a little bit closer, so I don't know if you maybe have some advice for that student. Sure. Um, when I first moved down here to St. Pete, I was originally considering staying in Tampa and doing the commute, which is not terrible, but I prefer to be closer to the campus, which is why I chose Gulfport over downtown St. Pete. Also, there, St. Pete is great, um, but there's a lot more distractions in downtown, and I just wanted to be really close to the school. I don't live in a Stetson Ohm house, uh, but I do live in a house, and it's walking distance from the campus. Uh, the other day, we actually timed it. We walked down to a marina within 10 minutes, so we're near the water, we're near the school. It's a really nice neighborhood, very quiet, um, not a lot of kids on my street, which is kind of good um, for noise purposes, but we really enjoy where we live. I like the quietness of Gulfport, and... Um, St. Pete is really nice. Downtown St. Pete's really nice, but it's only 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. um, I intern in downtown St. Pete and my commute is 10 minutes. There's really no traffic around here, whereas downtown is a little more congested, especially during the Rays games. And like I said, there's a little bit more distraction, which isn't a bad thing if you know how to manage it, but I prefer living in Gulfport. Great. And I just, I wanted to give a few of you peace of mind if you're happening to commute from a further distance, like say, for example, Tampa, I commute from Tampa every day. Um, so if you're in a situation where you just don't have the luxury of being a little bit closer to campus um, and have to commute from Tampa, you know, it's nice. We do have the Tampa Law Center. Um, one of our satellite campuses, if you will, over there, which um, you have the opportunity to take some classes over there, I believe after your first year, so you can take some there. Um, I'd recommend maybe getting some audiobooks. That's really helped with my commute. Um, but I did just want to mention that because I know that not everybody has the luxury of, of being right in the area. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't engage in the campus community and be present on campus a lot. Um, so it looks like we have a question that came in about career development and when you two would advise that a student first meet with career development. I'd say as soon as possible. Career development is an excellent resource um, for the students here on campus. They provide lots of great advice about um, tailoring your resume to the right employer or the right internship. Um, they can help you figure out what to wear for us girls. Um, it's, a, it's a great resource top to bottom. Um, all the staff there is really well informed and always really helpful. Like Nick was saying, all the professors have an open door policy and the same extends to any office on campus, whether it be student life, career development, housing. Everybody has an open door policy from what I found. So um, any questions that you have about polishing that resume or finding work even after you graduate, they're an excellent resource always and they stay with you. Um, I also went almost immediately and ordered business cards because the school allows you to order business cards through the Office of uh, Career Development and they've been invaluable in networking and different events to make sure people remember who you are and sending thank you cards and whatnot so it's a great resource. Great. Nick, have you had any experience in meeting with career development as well? Oh boy, have <laughs> I. Uh, they definitely know me in that office. Uh, I've definitely, I was, I went to career development first thing because we're coming to law school to get a job, so why not? Um, there, and so what I first initially did was just look at my resume, look at my cover letter. You know, I thought I had a darn good resume. Uh, turns out, you know, mine was focused towards business because that's what I went to. I went to business school. Um, and sometimes, you know, these different law firms are looking for different things, and they know what they're looking for. Our, our career office, they are very much so connected with the community and involved in talking to the people who are hiring. So they know like what kind of things to put on a resume, what kind of things to not. Um, you know, they can also help you tailor it. You know, every resume for me, I feel like has been different. I put different things on them, different things that I do, different things that I enjoy uh, based off of what a particular employer may be looking for. But I wouldn't know how to do that without them. So I would definitely say go and talk to them immediately. The business cards are great. You know, you can order the business cards and there's a lot of different networking events that you can get to go to with different attorneys and having those business cards is just a great way to just drop them off and say, hey, you know, 
this is my name, think about me in the future if you ever need anything. And then you can follow up with them either on LinkedIn or different things like that. You know, I'm, I'm meeting with career development again tomorrow. I, you know, I constantly, I'm in their office trying to talk to them about different things. You know, they help me create a LinkedIn. They're helping me create a cover letter. They're, they really are going out of the way to help me. And in return, I've also helped them a little bit, you know. They uh, knew that I worked for a particular firm that they didn't have very much knowledge about. So they called me up and I think we probably spoke on the phone for about an hour just discussing, you know, what was this firm like? What, what do you think? What do you recommend? And so um, definitely I'd say get involved with career development, make sure they know your name, and uh, try and bug them as much as I do. Great. So, Nick, you touched a little bit on the networking aspect that career development can provide. Uh, we also got a question in about, you know, whether or not we have opportunities for students to engage not only with alumni, but potentially with attorneys as well, and what some, some of those opportunities might look like. And the answer is yes, absolutely. We are very closely connected with our alumni community, as well as a lot of the local attorneys. Um, our student organizations do a lot of events inviting both of these populations back. Um, student Life in particular works really closely with the Student Bar Association uh, to host a social each semester, um, but the social is actually a an alumni networking social. Um, so it is set up just for the purpose of our students to get to engage and interact with our alumni. So those are just two examples. There are countless others. I know that Nick and Genesis probably both through their student organizations or events that they've attended have additional examples. But yes, absolutely, there, those opportunities exist. Do either of you have um, an event that maybe you've attended? Genesis, I know that you worked uh, very closely with a, a group of small student organizations last semester to bring a similar sort of event to campus. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there were a few smaller student organizations here on campus that got together and decided to host a social for attorneys and for uh, the students here at Stetson to get together and network. And um, we all pulled our funds and put together a really awesome program. Uh, it was our first year this past year and we're looking forward to putting it together again the next couple of years um, and keep it going. I'm also a uh, part of the Pennington of Court and there's various different kinds of ends of court. The Pennington of Court is a uh, end of court that's focused more on elder law and elder law practice. So essentially what it is is kind of like a club for attorneys to get together and get their continuing education credits but they also allow students to be part of it and um, that's actually where I networked with a judge and I'm interning for a judge this summer because of my involvement with the Pennington of Court. Once a month I got to have dinner with a room full of lawyers and it was definitely an invaluable experience. Great. Looks like we have a logistical question too about parking and whether or not um, parking is an issue here. I know depending on where you went to undergrad that parking could be a really tough situation, um, but I have not found that to be the case here at Stetson Genesis. I know that you commuted for a little bit and continue to do so from a little bit off campus. Have you ever had any issues with parking and, and what's the process like to get your parking pass? Not at all. Uh, the parking situation here at uh, Stetson is awesome. I know that you can relate in USF and the parking fiasco is what I will call it. Um, and I'm sure a lot of bigger universities are the same way. It's really difficult to find parking, and not to mention that you have to pay an insane amount of money for that sticker. Um, but here at Stetson, your parking pass is absolutely free. You register your car online on Banner Web, that system that streamlined everything. And then you just go down to public safety and pick it up. I actually have two cars registered because sometimes I'll drive my husband's car instead. And they let me have two cars. I didn't pay anything for the passes, and I can always find a spot. So I actually love the parking situation. It's one of the things I mention to uh, the incoming students when I give a tour as an ambassador. It's like one of the first things I point to the parking lot that's part of the <laughs> tour. So yeah. Great, thank you. And thank you. It looks like we're getting a lot of questions in. Keep them coming. We really appreciate it. Looks like we just got one in. It's a question and a little bit of a compliment. It says, you all are dressed so nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, but really the question is, um, is this how students usually dress and is this how I'm supposed to dress to attend? class. <laughs> so um, somewhere out in the world there's a myth going on that you have to wear a suit to law school. Uh, and I say myth because that's not the case one bit whatsoever. There's certain times where you're dressed up and you'll be wearing a suit and a lot, you know, orientation is one of those days. But when you come to class this is almost like 
your traditional undergraduate class. You can wear essentially whatever you want. Now, that being said, with this being a graduate program, I always try to tell people, you know, be mindful. You know, you're in class with who is going to be your future colleagues. So try to set a good impression that way, you know. It's maybe not such a good idea to come to school or class in sweatpants every day. That being said, when finals get around, sometimes you tend to, tend to see a couple more people wearing sweatpants than normal. But you can, you can wear whatever you want. Um, you don't have to be dressed up in a suit every day. You know, try to come comfortable and ready to learn is the big thing. Great. Thank you. It looks like we're getting some questions in about advocacy. Um, Stetson, you know, is ranked number one for advocacy in the country. So I'm guessing that might be a reason why some of you have, have chosen to come here. Uh, so Nick or Genesis, can you talk a little bit either from a firsthand perspective or maybe from the perspective of having friends or colleagues who have been involved in some of the advocacy programs, can you maybe talk a little bit about each of those and um, their experience with that? Um, sure. So I'm not actually a part of any of the advocacy programs. When I was contemplating what I wanted to do, uh, when I joined the MBA program, that was kind of what I felt like I needed to gear myself towards. That being said, uh, you know, your second semester in your research and writing class, they already start preparing you for becoming an advocate because what you're going to do as an attorney is advocate in some way, shape, or form. So you end up writing an appellate brief and you have to actually argue it in front of your teachers and the teaching assistants for that class. That's kind of like your first step. Um, the next step that you would have to take if you wanted to try, on, try and join one of the advocacy teams is their tryout process. They have a tryout process. They explain everything very much so in detail for you. And you go and try and just showcase your skills. Uh, the programs are absolutely great. I've had people who have gone to Italy, um, all, all across the United States. And a uh, nice thing about it, you know, if you are on one of the advocacy teams, you, you know, you're not paying anything to do all that traveling. So uh, it was really cool for me to be able to see some of my friends get to go, you know, to another country for essentially nothing. When I say nothing, not a dime, but they did have to then put in a bunch of work to make sure that that happened. So uh, I definitely think that the advocacy programs are great, but I haven't been a part of them myself. I just know that the people who have have been very much so pleased with them. Thanks, Nick. So we're getting a lot of questions in. So if we don't get to your question, I would encourage you to email us after the webinar. Um, you can email studentlife@law.stetson.edu. Um, again, housing at law if the question is specific to housing, and we'll make sure that we get you connected with all of the appropriate emails if we don't get to your question. Um, but Genesis, I wanted to go back to something you mentioned as being a part of, and that's the Student Leadership Development Program. Can you talk a little bit about that program and maybe provide an overview um, to our audience about what that is and how they can get involved in it? Sure. The um, Student Leadership Development Program is a credit-based program where uh, students can participate in some interactive campus events that the uh, leadership program puts on, or the leadership committee, excuse me, puts on the um, leadership program. And uh, that normally consists of luncheons. We have three a semester where you get a credit for attending these uh, luncheons. We also have workshops and even a retreat in the spring. Uh, these are all geared towards helping students hone their leadership skills while they're in school. Uh, no matter what you work in, whether it's nonprofit or big law firms or you know, if you're a courtroom or a boardroom, you will have support staff, you'll have people that look up to you as a leader, and it's important to make sure that you hone those skills early and are prepared to lead the people who are gonna be looking up to you. Uh, knowledge is power, and we'll be very powerful people when we graduate from Stetson, so it's important to make sure that we uh, use that power for good, if you will. So the leadership program is a really fun, interactive way to meet all kinds of judges and um, other people who may have a JD but aren't actually practicing lawyers, like Rich McKay spoke at one of our luncheons. Um, and it's just a really fun, interesting, interactive opportunity to work, network with uh, certain speakers and also really a lot of personal enrichment too with the workshops and with the retreats.
very well said. And I just wanted to reiterate, Genesis mentioned getting credits for participating in some of the programs, and that's absolutely right. You do get credits, and the credits essentially go towards a leadership development certificate that should you have participated in enough of our events and programs that you will get upon graduation. So it's um, not only a physical certificate, but it also um, goes on your student record. So it's, it's a really cool program and I would encourage you to get involved. We have um, our first luncheon coming up right away in September, so I would definitely encourage you to get involved in that. Um, looks like we have a question about what you guys did for your first summer. So I'm assuming that means after your 1L year. Um, what did you do? Do you guys work? Did you take a break? Did you take class? Um, what did that look like for you? Well, I worked mostly. Um, both on campus here with the Elder Law Center and off campus. Um, I also um, did a little bit of, uh, you know, waitressing and stuff to pay bills and enjoyed my summer for the most part. So, I mean, there, there was a whole mix for me for my summer, my first summer, but um, I have some mentees who chose not to do an internship and that's perfectly fine. Some people need the break. I have some mentees who chose to take classes and work and travel. You can do anything you want with your summer, really. Um, it, I, I highly recommend taking a little bit of a breather and a break, but um, getting that experience too is really important. So um, I, I definitely enjoyed working with the Elder Law Center over my first summer. I got to work with the uh, Special Needs Trust Conference and helping put that together and that was a great networking experience. Great. Nick, what did you do your first summer? Uh, I also uh, worked. I, I kind of lucked out on this. You know, I was looking for something to do for the summer, and I wasn't quite sure exactly what it was I wanted to do. And uh, realized that I had a mutual friend who was an attorney and just happened to reach out to him and say, you know, I'm just finishing up first year of law school, looking for something to do. Is there any opportunities you have? And he said, wow, it just so happens we're going to start looking for somebody right now. So I applied and was able to get the job. I worked in Tampa. Um, I also stayed and worked in the gym. I've been a gym assistant my entire time here at Stetson. Um, so I you know, would get off work and go to the gym. Nice thing about that, I would just kind of clean up a little bit. But then on, in the same instance, too, I got to spend a little bit of time myself kind of just lifting weights and hanging out. Um, so I did that. Uh, you know, now we're also in the summer now, so I'll just go ahead and say this summer, you know, I continued with my internship. I had an internship with a federal judge. That was right out of the internship office here on Stetson. And so I had a really great experience with this judge, and she asked me if I would like to come back and continue working for her over the summer. So I'm continuing to do that this summer as well as taking classes. Great. Thank you. Well, it looks like we have time maybe just for one or two more questions. So I saw one just come in about studying for finals and what the best way is to study for finals. I, I know that the best way for one student might not be the best way for another student. So I know you're going to kind of have to find what personally works for you. Uh, but Nick or Genesis, do you have any tips that you would find um, helpful to share? I would say stick with your regular routine. What's been working for you all semester will continue to work well for you during study exam, uh, your exam reading period. Um, get a lot of rest, eat well. If you're working out, don't stop working out. Keep working out. If you're not working out, that's okay. That's me. <laughs> um, you know, just do what you've been continuing to do. Stay with your regular routine. Um, and I would say, you know, you also have to gauge what kind of studier you are. I thought that study groups worked well for me. I found out that really I needed to study mostly on my own and then get with a group to kind of reaffirm that I was getting the information correctly. Um, but you don't, uh, you, you should really stick to what's been working for you all semester long and find that footing during the year so that when reading period comes, you're really just in the groove at that point. And what have you found that's worked for you? Uh, definitely, I would have to agree with, you know, sticking with what was worked best for you all semester. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that studying for finals starts, to me, day one. And I didn't realize that whenever I first started law school, but I realize it now. You know, Friday afternoon, you get out of class, I think it's about 12 o'clock. You got the rest of the weekend, do whatever you want. Rather than going and hang out, take an hour or two, start an outline. Start looking at your notes and just preparing yourself, just, even if it's just for just a short amount of time. But like she said, continue with your schedule. If you're exercising, don't stop exercising. If you like to go to a movie on Saturday nights, go see a movie on Saturday nights. 
don't let other people throw you off your game. You know, I was always the person who I couldn't study past 10 p.m., and that's just how I am. So I would always stop studying early in the evening time. But I had lots of friends who would be at the library all night, and they would talk about how I was at the library all night. Well, you don't have to do that. Don't be intimidated by what other people are doing. Stick to what you're doing, and it'll work for you. I promise it will. Great. Thank you both. So we are really close to wrapping up. The hour went really quickly for us. Hopefully it did for you as well. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we shared our contact information. I know we've been throwing a lot of emails at you, um, but I wanted to make sure that you got some of our personal emails as well. So if you have any questions that maybe you think of after we wrap up here today, or if we weren't able to get to your question today, please do reach out and contact us. Um, we can be reached at studentlife at law.stetson.edu. Um, you can also always reach out to the admissions office. Their email is lawadmit at law.stetson.edu. And if you have a question, maybe for one of us personally, we would be happy to answer those as well. Uh, Genesis, your email is gmatute, yes. M-A-T-U-T-E, -T -E. Yeah. at law.stetson.edu. And then um, mine is jkelly2 at law.stetson.edu. And Nick, your N-M-I-T-C-H-E-L at law.stetson.edu. Wasn't sure if it was one or two L's there for a second. One L, one L. <laughs> Great. Well, with that said, we are just about out of time. Um, we really enjoyed being able to talk with you today and answer some of your questions. I'm sure that you'll have a lot more. Um, and we are really, really looking forward to seeing you in just a few weeks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching Stetson Law Live. For more information, send us an email or give us a call. For your convenience, our contact information will remain on screen for the next few minutes. Be sure to check our homepage often for news, information, and updates. Thanks again. We look forward to hearing from you soon.